Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to be re-educated, to wash your blood until it's really common is crimson? Then this is the place. We sing dum 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 da 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 dum. One, one of the most secretive location back in the Soviet time. Soviet Union was the ready superpower which inherited an ancient Russian dream to endorse the old Moscow as the new Constantinople for the entire Christian world at any cost. In the most bleak period during the Cold War time, the Soviet Union created more than 40 secret settlements for the military purposes, all of which were given a funky code name. This was once the parking lot for the officers and today it's just a big ground with a few birds who are flying on the sky. Skirona was once a thriving military, scientific and civilian community which held a really high esteem inside the Iron Curtain. In its heyday, when it was home for more than 5,000 people, Skirona 1 played a crucial part in the Soviet Union's defense strategy. To work as a scientist in one of their radar system projects entailed massive honor also socio-economic privilege for their families. They were often portrayed as the most progressive scientists in various newspapers and magazines. As a propaganda tool, of course, to stimulate a fervent patriotic sentiment. At the same time, there was an impressive surveillance system aiming to detect any means of defective actions amongst the engineers as early as possible to keep the industrial military espionage away from their unit. Many high-ranking military officers were paranoid, monitoring each and every member of their teams carefully. The posters here really give us a very different narrative about life here in Skironda. The soldiers must follow the order from their general and everything is about standardization. Inside the research center, we find a number of really thick doors. It would be interesting to know what people did in such rooms. The object, the missile attack warning system, which was designed and created in Skironda, operated the Dnister M type of horizon radar, the first generation of Soviet horizon radar. This system consists of two horn antennas, which are 250 meters long and 15 meters high. Its design and construction began in 1965 and was completed in January 1969. Look at this, this is really thick. I can imagine once this could be a very important shelf in this place and today we only see the debris of its glory which once signified the power of Soviet Union. Skronda was by all means a strange isle upon the Latvian heartland. 
in which the only spoken language was Russian. Most of their employees were either extremely well-educated engineers who had been educated in one of the finest institutions in Moscow or Stalingrad, or the steady patriotic soldiers. Few of them ever established any means of friendship with the locals. On the floor, there are still some notebooks which are printed in Russian. They must have left the book here by some reason in this dilapidated house. Unlike an ordinary workplace, there was an impending danger which followed them every day. This is the shelter for the soldiers to hide in during air raids. This dwelling behind me was once the kindergarten and first Grunda's officers' children. Just imagine growing up in such a tense environment. I would like to know how their childhood memories really were. According to the most violent Bolshevik idealist, the children should be raised in the spirit of the moral code of the builder of the communist man. To attend to their physical development and their instruction in their preparation for the socially useful activity, many Soviet children's books focused on their political aims as propaganda that aimed to instill the young minds with revolutionary ideas. In comparison with the classic Russian narratives, Baba Yaga. Demons, kings, and queens were gone, and planes, parade, and farming were in. This apartment was once a proud home of a Soviet officer. This room is fairly comfortable with beautiful wallpapers and really sturdy wooden floor. Nevertheless, their mind. Are confined in a small box, and what is right and what is wrong is dictated by the intelligentsia from Moscow, not from their heart. Bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao. This melancholic song was once my childhood lullaby, my first impression of the Soviet glory in the time. When I could not select which music I wanted to listen to, nor could anyone in my immediate vicinity have the possibility to enjoy such a simple pleasure. Every sight in this ghost town gives me a sense of hope. That an increased number of autocratic societies would eventually liberate themselves from the iron grips.